Hi, my name is Paul Chatlin. I've been whole food, plant-based, no oil for 10 years. So I started in 2012. And the why was because I had an option. Uh, I was real sick. I had uh, scheduled a bypass or heart transplant. I went to the Cleveland Clinic. They uh, assigned me a doctor whose mentor was Dr. Esselstyn. And it was discovered I needed immediate bypass surgery. And on the way, the why became clear. It was either have the bypass with all the complications that could happen or make a lifestyle change to whole food, plant-based, no oil. That's the why. What were you doing prior to that? Living my best life. You know, I was just, you know, doing all the things that somebody in their early 50s would do. I, at that point, I was power lifting weights. I was playing softball, I was eating with no regard, traveling the world, uh, hanging out with friends. I was enjoying my life. Did you think you were healthy? Well, yeah, I did. I really did. Uh, I thought I was healthy because I was, you know, 5'9". I weighed 212 pounds, but I was power lifting. So I was, I wouldn't say all muscle, but mostly muscle. Uh, I was able to ride bikes and exercise and didn't seem to be bothering me until one day it bothered me. What do you mean it bothered you? The first time I realized something was wrong was I would wake up with real chest pains, like really severe chest pains. And that happened to go on every day for about three months. And I, was, I just kept thinking like, you know, even though heart disease ran in my family, I thought, well, gosh, I was always working out. So I had to be healthy and this thing would just go away but it didn't and every morning I'd wake up with chest pain and every night I'd go to bed with chest pain and it just wasn't getting any better and then I had a moment where I was leaving a meeting from work and I literally got outside and could not take seven steps without just stopping and just saying something is really really wrong I made an appointment to see the doctor I got in the next day and he heard a heart murmur he had not heard before and immediately he said, you know, let's go get you to a cardiologist. And I got to go to a local cardiologist the very next day. And I did all the tests that you do up to a heart catheter and a heart biopsy. And the doctor walks in at the end and says, listen, we need to schedule a heart catheter and biopsy. But from my 20 plus years of experience, I'm sorry to tell you, you may need a heart transplant or bypass. And I'm like, oh my goodness. So I... Uh, you know, that's a heavy, heavy, heavy words to, to listen to. And on the way home, I stopped at my wife's office. She had no clue I was feeling this way. I, didn't, I love her. I, I did not want to upset her. And I thought I could get through it and get better. So after explaining to her what I was living with and that I went to a doctor, um, tears were flowing out of her eyes. I think I teared up as well. And her boss walks in and says, what's going on? We shared exactly what was going on with him, with me. And he said, let me get back with you, stay right here. And it turned out that he made a contribution because he had a lung transplant a few years prior at the Cleveland Clinic. And he made some calls and he absolutely, he got me into the Cleveland Clinic with an appointment one day before I was gonna to go to Beaumont Hospital, local hospital, and have the same heart catheter and heart biopsy done. So here we were a couple days later driving to Cleveland and they got a thousand doctors. I don't know how many exactly, but they're noted for heart disease. And you could tell when they walk in, they said in 2012 or 13, I can't give you the exact date, that you see a big sign that says we didn't lose any patients to bypass surgery. Now on the surface, that sounds great, but I know that my dad and my three uncles uh, all had bypass surgery. Three of them died. One of them, my dad lived, but I saw him cry for four days straight. These are the memories of you know, my youth. So I, I also have three sons. So the idea of having this radical surgery is a little scary to me. I go have a heart catheter. And during the heart catheter, I could hear my doctor and you know, who I just met that morning start going, yes, yes, yes. And I'm kind of in twilight at that time. So I could hear him say yes, but I don't know why. I just knew that they needed to 
do a biopsy today, another catheter today, and then rule out, do I need bypass or do I need a transplant, heart transplant? My doctor was a head of heart transplant division for Cleveland Clinic. So he had gotten all my records and it was decided that he should be my doctor because there aren't that many heart transplant doctors and they thought that I was a candidate for that. But it turned out I wasn't, but rather I did have a 100% block in my right artery and, uh, and more. What he said was, you don't need a heart transplant, but you do need bypass surgery. I said, well, what else is wrong? He says, well, you've got an enlarged heart, you have leaky valves, you have a heart murmur, you have a left bundle block, you have scar sidosis of the aorta. He said, you're a hot mess, but you got 100% block of your right artery, so we need to get that done. So I'm all prepped up, being wheeled in for surgery. And right at the door, he says, hmm, I've only offered this to one other person in 20 years, but are you willing to make a lifestyle change? And maybe if you could make that lifestyle change, you will not need surgery today. I'm like, yes. Well, I didn't know what nutrition was. You know, think back 10 years ago, a little bit more. There one or two cookbooks, there a few people. Nutrition, what, what, to me, I just said yes. I just didn't want the surgery. He said, okay, just let's go on home. Before he did that, he gives me the phone. He dials a number and a guy I never knew named Dr. Caldwell Esselson was on the phone. And he's like, hi, Paul. Uh, my friend Mays, the doctor, said, uh, you're willing to make a lifestyle change, so why don't you go on home and I'll give you a call in the morning. So think about it. I get into the Cleveland Clinic when I shouldn't have, okay, really quickly. They assigned me one doctor, could have been any doctor, but it was the one doctor whose mentor in med school was Dr. Caldwell Esselstyn. And then Dr. Esselstyn was home that evening. It was like 9.30 when I talked to him. So here we were, you know, just finishing up the... Uh, Final hours at the Cleveland Clinic, we drive back home, 8 o'clock in the morning, he calls me up, we spend about an hour on the phone, and immediately I go buy his book and read it, and then within two days, I take every bit of meat, dairy, and oil out of my house and give it away to charity, and then I spend the next four or five hours at Whole Foods at that time, label reading, <laughs> learning what I can have and what I can't have. Boy, that was eye-opening. And then the next one was, you know, I was under 90 days bed rest because they had to shrink the heart, stop the valves from leaking. So my day was basically, and I'm fairly hyperactive, um, the day was mostly spent with 16, 17 hours of sleep. I was on some pretty wild drugs to knock me out all day. And then it was cooking. So I, I, I never loved sleeping that much, and I definitely didn't like cooking, so I had to do the two things I didn't want to do. But during those four, five, 14 days, 20 days tops, I started dropping some crazy weight. I was like 220 at that point, something like that. And I started just dropping the weight and um, all of a sudden my angina went away. Like like 14 to 18 days into it, you know, I'm like, wow, I don't have a chest pain today. You know, and that felt pretty good. And yet, you know, here I am eating the foods I grew up not liking one bit. But then about 14 to again, 18 days, I started realizing, you know what, those Brussels sprouts, I, I never liked them, but they're not so bad anymore. Asparagus, I never liked them growing up, but they're not so bad. So, you know, fast forward to this moment. Listen, I don't love it, okay? I don't dream about eating a lot of these vegetables, but I don't hate them like I used to as a kid growing up. So for the next, you know, 60 to 80, 90 days, my day was pretty much sleeping and learning how to cook. Back then, maybe two cookbooks. So that was it. And uh, there were some tough times during that period because I, there were moments I would sit there and say, well, gosh, it's, it's in the summer. This is the time where I shine because I, I could be outside all day. I'm inside sleeping and then I'm cooking. Like maybe I should have had the bypass, you know, maybe, you know. But I started getting outside a little bit after the 90 days started walking and all of a sudden I'm like, wow, I've 90 days, I've lost like 25 pounds. I feel a little lighter, I feel a little better. And that kept going, it kept going and I've lost about 70 pounds and I've kept it off uh, for 10 years, which is kind of cool because my bones don't hurt that much. My cholesterol, which at its worst was 347. Uh, and by the way, a backdrop on that was that I had the same doctor for 30 years. And he tried Zocor, I got the side effects. Then he tried Lipitor, and I got the side effects. 
Then we tried Pravastatin, and Pravastatin was the weakest of all the drugs. And Pravastatin, he gave me the most he could give me, and my cholesterol baseline to 280, and he was okay with that for about 10 years, okay? I, I didn't know, but now that I do know, shame on him, you know? I mean, shame on him, right? But there are only a few drugs out there. So today, I am now being plant-based for almost uh, about 10 years. No oil, no meat, no dairy. My cholesterol is 77, okay? My total cholesterol is 77. It's so low. It's because I eat perfectly. And, you know, so... 77? Yeah, pretty crazy, huh? From 347 to 77. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, you know, I, like I said, I was able to feel healthy every day and feel good. So it's like the new thinner me. You know, I can go bike riding. And the thing I probably love the most about all this is I could work out one day where my wife and I, we go bike riding 20 miles. The next day I could do it again and again every day. I'm never sore and I'm, you know, getting older. So usually people my age will, oh, this is hurting, that's hurting. I'm usually not hurting too much. So your triglycerides, your HDL and your LDL total is 77. Well, I don't know about the triglycerides, but the combination HDL, LDL oh, okay. is a combination is a 77. Oh, okay. So your total might be a little, might be like one something. One low, one low, you yeah. know, like it's really low. <laughs> okay, I mean, okay. but I'm under that, that area of heart attack proof. That's yeah. what Esselstyn says. So I remember back when I was on that gurney, you know, I made a lot of promises. You know, I mean, I, I said to myself, you know how you do that as a kid. Hey, if you get me out of this trouble, and I used to get in enough trouble as a kid, I made that promise a lot, probably rarely kept it. Probably that's why I got in trouble. Um, but I would say, hey, Lord, if you get me out of this one, I, I, I owe you one, I'll do something. So I was on the gurney, I'm like, oh, please, you know, like, like what am I really expecting, right? So I'm getting ready to go for bypass surgery, and then I make the promise, and then all of a sudden my doctor says, hey, listen, uh, maybe you don't need surgery if you're willing to make a lifestyle change. Again, not knowing what he was asking on the lifestyle change, because that by itself, as I look back, was just crazy enormous. But when I went home that next day, I realized, hey, man, you know, if I get better, I, I, I owe somebody something. So it took me about 90 days to start getting better. I kept asking myself, okay, Remember that promise, like this was a big promise, okay? So what I thought was, I, I didn't know how to cook. So I went to the Essence cooking class and they charged a, a, you know, a lot for me or whatever, but it was well worth it, I learned a lot. Uh, shout out to Ann and, and, and Caldwell, Essie. You know, I went back home and I expensed it. You know, I wanna get reimbursed and I got denied. I'm like, whoa, a sign from God, you know? I'm gonna go after getting this approved through Blue Cross Blue Shield. So I started working my way up Blue Cross Blue Shield and I got actually after about 60 days to the highest level and they said, we're never gonna be able to prove it unless it's passed by the Michigan legislature. And the only way for that to happen is I would have to start making trips to Lansing. I really didn't wanna be doing that. So I said, nah, I guess I owe somebody another favor, something big. So I realized that, you know what? I, I was starting to get healthy and my life was changing, but I was getting back to the world of the living again. Uh, after a uh, 90 days at home stay. And I said, well, you know, maybe I could just put a little ad in the paper and maybe people in my community will see it and if they got heart disease, maybe I could help them. Maybe I could educate them. So I put a little $20 ad in the paper. I said, hey, I'm interested in learning how to stop, maybe even reverse some heart disease through plant-based nutrition. I'm opening up my house on this day at this time, but you have to call me first 20 people. And within two days, I had, I had 20 people at my house. I, like, like they, they called, the next day they came over. I cooked a, a little meal for them, and I opened up all my cupboards, and I talked, I showed them some books that I bought. My organization, the Plant-Based Nutrition Support Group, I still have these people with me 10 years later, and they're all healthy, and it's kind of cool, and it feels good, and they're involved. So I said, okay, well, maybe I should do this again. You know, because maybe once was nice, but you know, maybe I'll do it again. So in the following month, same ad, within two, three days, another new 20 people came over. I said, oh boy, I'm onto something, okay? Now I'm still working, right? I'm still, you know, being a dad and a father and, you know, all that stuff, but I'm like, hmm, I, people are interested in this. Maybe this is my calling to, to help people. Finished the second meeting, 20 people at my house, and I realized that, like, they were asking a lot of doctor questions. I'm just a guy, I'm not, I'm not anybody special, nor am I a doctor. So 
called the heads of cardiology at the three major hospitals here in Michigan. I said, do you have any like lifestyle, you know, medicine, cardiologist, somebody who understands maybe an alternative way other than just procedures and pills? And they gave me three names. One name was repeating, it was Dr. Joel Kahn. I had never met or heard of Joel Kahn up to that point, they gave me the name. So I figured, well, his name was brought up three times. So I'll, go, I'll call him. So I got a hold of him, I went to his house. After about two, three hours, I'm like, hey, would you help me with this? I want to do a bigger meeting, but I don't want to answer doctor questions. I don't feel comfortable doing that. You could do that part. I'll tell my story and uh, we'll see where it takes us. And he said, yes. So we did it at Beaumont Hospital and again, put a little ad in the paper and we had 123 people. The room could only hold like 90. And usually you have a meeting like that, the following month it would go less, but we actually got 141 people in the second meeting. And it was really Joel answering questions, giving a little presentation, me telling my story. And uh, then three days before our third meeting at the Bowman Hospital, they, they booted us. Was it politics? Mm, I don't know. Standard America diet versus plant-based nutrition? I don't know. I just knew that we had three days for me to call 141 people and find a place that we could meet. So I start calling churches and synagogues and I call the Birmingham school systems and I always give them a shout out because they opened their door to their, both of their high school and their hearts to us. And we were loyal to them and they were loyal to us and we were with them doing live events every single month for eight years. And that would be not only, uh, you know, like speaker events, but we'd have culinary events or we would have the world's largest plant-based picnic or, you know, we did a whole lot of things at this school and they were always just the finest people to work with. And it was kind of centrally located too in, in the metropolitan Detroit area. Plant-Based Nutrition Support Group was born and we started, you know, having 121 people in that one meeting and we grew to about 11,000. And uh, then COVID hit and we had to go immediately virtual. We were, I always am proud of this, that, that COVID hit like I think we finally found out about it like February, March. We shut down February 1st. We were, I think, the first organization to shut down because our members are usually 16 older. And you know, we were seeing a lot of these people in other states dying off, so we had to just shut it down no matter what. But most of our income came from the live events. It was a big decision. Um, we also had something called small groups. Small groups, we had some 54 community groups in Michigan and about eight to 10 in other states, a couple in Windsor. So we are starting to do a national expansion of our small group idea, which is in every city, there's somebody who needs a hug and a hand and some nutritional information. So we'd find a host and they'd open up their home just as I opened up my home and it continued to grow. But again, because of COVID, everything was a hard stop. We went virtual. And we still are virtual because COVID hasn't left. And I can't bear the idea of going to an event that I would host and somebody gets sick because of whatever the reasons. So we are now a virtual organization. We've got a lot of followers, a lot of uh, same events, same speaker events, same culinary events. All you have to do is go onto our website to connect with us. That's www.pbnsg.org. That's kind of... Uh, an abbreviated, maybe long-winded story of who I am and who the organization is. But, you know, I've had a chance in two years to really sit back and kind of reflect. For example, you know, when you're willing to go whole food plant-based, you know, I didn't have the tools I have now. It's like, I didn't realize what kind of effect it has on the people you love the most. And I'm not gonna talk about me personally, you know, putting in 60 hours every week for 10 years. I made a choice to do that. I wanted to give back. But the effect it had on my family, the people I love the very, very most, I mean, they, they still love me, they're still with me, but, you know, I missed out. You know, I didn't miss out that much, but I just, you know, it was tough. We used to go out to dinners all the time. Now, I rarely go out to dinner because, quite honestly, I have salad every day of my life. I'm not going to go out to dinner and have a salad. You know, I, if they let me bring my own food, sometimes I will. If they give me a baked potato, as long as I don't squirt some uh, oil on it. You know, but it's the days of enjoying going out to dinner because I was that guy who'd go out to dinner, buy, you know, I'd have four or five Coca-Colas, a couple loaves of bread with oil. There was no stopping me. And now it would be, can I just have a little lettuce and I'll bring my own dressing? 
So it affected the family in that way. And plus traveling, you know, I used to, I was so happy to travel with my wife all the, everywhere around the world. And there were so many places we still wanted to see. But, you know, the last time I went anywhere, um, I went to New York and my beautiful niece said, I got it covered. I know what you can't have and what you can't have until I got to New York. And all the plans that she had, we get to there and they're like, sorry, we can't do this. And she was really working hard at making sure I could get food to eat. So it just, it's, it's difficult. You know, it's like really, really difficult. And I don't want to like personally be at a place I've never been to and in, want to enjoy the museums or the churches or the art or whatever it is. And then worry about eating like I'm hungry all day, you know, so it just, you know, those are the type of things that have affected uh, me and my family. And, uh, and all I could do is just double up on loving them. And, uh, you know, my wife still uh, still loves me. So, hey, winner. Doesn't New York have plenty of vegan restaurants? Well, they got vegan, but that's the oil thing. See, I'm, I am no oh, oil. Okay. Vegan is, is blown up. And, you know, yeah, it's yeah, funny yeah. how they've that, you know, plant-based was such a, such a sacred word. Now everything in the world is plant-based. Mm -hmm. Plant-based lotion, plant-based makeup. They're gonna do plant-based the same way they did vegan. They're gonna destroy it with all this processed crap. They, they already have. They already have. I mean, they, you don't even know if it's got animal in it, you know? Right. It could be plant-based with animal. It's just, it's just going back to the way it was before. When you think of the plant-based world, we're, we're a very small amount and we got even smaller through COVID. So I make this plea to anybody who's listening, I would love and I've tried to put us all together under one roof and let's all work together. Let's have a common voice. Let's put away the egos. Let's put away the history. If you talk to the greatest people in the plant-based world, they all agree on 95% of, there's some commonality between all of them. But it's that 5% that keeps them away from each other. That has to go away because for planet's sake, for animal's sake, for human's sake, probably for planet's sake. It's scary to me as a grandfather now to think that nothing's really changed. I mean, you know, when you look back, there aren't more restaurants that are plant-based. There's probably less. You know, there aren't a lot of plant-based options. Now, granted, the grocery stores have improved. I'll give you that. They, they, you know, you, you have more organics, bigger vegetable aisle, which is great. But you don't see plant-based restaurants. You don't see plant-based at hospitals. You don't see plant-based being taught at medical schools. Why? If it's the healthiest way to live and it's good for animals and definitely the planet, I know people always tell me, Paul, you're naive. It's the special interest groups. It's the big money. I, I just believe you do the, what's right. Just, just do the right thing. And if doing the right thing is eating a certain way to save the planet for our kids, then, then eat the right way. But that's me being on a soapbox about it. It's easy to get real pessimistic the more you travel, I think, because you know, I've noticed I feel that way sometimes too. But at the same time, you don't know how these cities are evolving when you're just driving through them or, or there momentarily. Like in my hometown, I've seen small, minuscule changes, you know, even in the bigger cities near me. It's definitely growing. You know? Right. I, I, I look at the bigger markers like A, if I go to the hospital, do they have plant-based offerings to eat? Two, is it being taught at medical schools? Number three, are current doctors being asked to take a class in nutrition? It's not being served in hospitals. It's not being taught in medical schools. And doctors are not being forced to get additional, I mean, like, I always wonder, like, you became a doctor, it, it couldn't have been for the money because you, you worked too hard to become a doctor, too many hours. So if it isn't the money, you did it to heal people. So if the key to healing people or a lot of people is what they're eating and through nutrition, why wouldn't you want to learn as much as you could about nutrition like you did at med school about medicine as you would so you don't have to give them the pills and you don't have to give them the procedures that you could actually say, oh, you got heart disease. Oh, you have diabetes. Oh, you want to lose weight. Here's what you do. And don't see me in a year. See me in a couple of weeks. Let's do this together. Again, you know, that's just my opinion on what should we, we should do. But again, this all flows back into the planet. Global, global warming. You know, again, I'm no expert, but they're all contributing. Physicians committee, aren't they doing some pretty good work with the hospitals, I guess? Yes, that's, I don't know to what depth, but I mean, you know, they are a doctor medical facility. So I don't know what they're doing outside of it, but 
you know, you're also talking about Neil Bernard, who's spent a lifetime with all his great people uh, promoting nutritional health. And, you know, like what scares me too is that all these people along with me, we're getting older. Mm -hmm. Who's that next generation who's going to carry that torch? Yeah. I'm looking for you. If you want, connect with me. Okay. The next generation is something I'm really excited about. And that is people being raised vegan. And I'm seeing more and more of that. And I think that's going to be the next big wave. Seeing people grow up from birth this way. And people living longer that didn't, that at least lived longer, you know. And then when we see more and more successes like this, it's going to be so irresistible and, and undeniable, you know. Well, what, what I would say, and I've, I know somebody who works with me, I don't say for me, but with me, Megan Burt. She's got her son whole food plant-based from birth, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, so he's, I think, six, seven, something like that. He's had his challenges. I mean, not health-wise, but community-wise, you know, where people wanted to try other foods. Mm -hmm. So it's tough when you have to tell your kid, no, you can't eat that stuff or you shouldn't eat that stuff. Here's what I would suggest. I've got a dear friend, his name's Ted Barnett, Rochester Lifestyle Medicine Institute, out of Rochester, New York. He has three different types of jumpstart programs. So if you're kind of dabbling, you're thinking about it, join one of his jumpstarts. See, I think he's a jumpstart, a lift and chip program. Every month he's doing a jumpstart. That's 15 days to get to know how to cook it, what it is. So it's education, it's awareness, it's a lifestyle change management. But you should sign up for that. See what it's like. You know, I personally think people should do it for 60 days because you want to see the biggest results you can that will sustain. Mm -hmm. But if you're kind of plant curious, that's the route I would go. I'm really glad you said that because I worry about efforts that are like Meatless Monday and stuff. And I know people who've tried that, they didn't notice any changes no, physiologically doesn't... or anything, you know? So, you know, your taste buds aren't gonna change, your, your, weights, marketing. your weight. That was, was like marketing, it was a cute little marketing. You know, like, you know, I just, <laughs> Meatless Monday. So, wow, one day you don't have meat, but you could now have fake meat, you know, or something like that. You're, yeah. you're not going to get healthy by giving it up yeah. once. Yeah, yeah. You, you know, so you, you get healthy by changing your lifestyle. You didn't have any medical procedures. You absolutely just straight up bypassed. I bypassed, medical. bypassed. Yeah. That's what I yeah, did. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so yeah, I mean, I was scheduled to have a triple bypass. Here I am, 10 years later. Have they done tests to see how, what, what you look well, like? Well, it's interesting you say that because, I mean, all the numbers are still the consistent. Mm -hmm. And if anybody knows what my body feels like, it's me. But I, I think soon I'm gonna probably get an echo and some other exams. You know, I get the blood tests. I, I get a blood lipid panel every year or every other year. But I mean, hey, I'm, I'm feeling good. I mean, if I didn't feel good, I'd go see a doctor, right? That's what you see a doctor for. If I feel good, why do I wanna go see a doctor? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but I think this year I'm gonna go see my doctor, get blood work done, maybe get an echocardiogram, and then we could see. I would be almost tempted to get a heart catheter just to see if the, the, the arteries have reversed, but there's always a risk when you're doing a heart, uh, heart catheter, there's still a risk. My thought is just, you know what, my give back is gonna be to serve people in nutritional education and save lives. You know, as far as me being a, you know, open book to my medical side, uh, I'll probably keep that with my doctors. But, but yeah, I, I think it's getting close to a time where I should do something more than a blood test or a, a stress test or something like that you know, get an echo, ultrasound, some, some other things. I, I may do that. PBSNG, did I say that right? PBNSG. Now, just so you PBN know, Plant-Based Nutrition Support Group, but I used to have fun with it. I used to think it was the, I used to have it as my URL, Plant-Based Nutrition Support Group. And all, all the members were just complaining all the time. So we made it PBNSG. Cool, and it's .org? .org. If somebody goes there, do they have to wait to go to some virtual event or can, is everything just accessible right now? Well, it's a there? combination. We've got for you know certain things for just anybody in the world mm -hmm. and then we got a membership. We also have archived every single meeting we've had for eight, nine years. So we've got an incredibly broad library of talks. The one thing about the whole plant-based world, which is somewhat mind-blowing to me, is 10 years ago, they said, give up meat, dairy, and oil and you'll be able to be healthier you will hopefully help your heart, diabetes, lose weight, keep it off. 10 years later, it, it, the information's the same. The science hasn't changed. Okay, so it's not like, you know, we, you know, so we offer as an organization all the speaker information. If you're a member, you could go into our archives and then pick out multiple speakers on something that you're interested in. 
Uh, we also have culinary events. You know, the secret to this is, you know, you used to grow up, like for me, I grew up loving pizza, okay? Love pizza. You know, that was my food of choice. Well, I, I don't really get to have it unless it's like a whole wheat pizza and it's not nearly as tasty as it was back when I grew up. So I think learning how to cook is important. We, we've got our own cookbook, Perfectly Plant-Based Cookbook, but today there's a hundred cookbooks out More there. There's that. so many, right. <laughs> yeah. so, so it's like when you think about something, they could make it, you know, and, but it may not be, you know, what mom made as a kid growing up because we don't put a lot, of, we don't put sugar in it. You know, we salt. don't put all the salt and the sweet and the oil in it. So that's the change. It's gotten better and better, but it's not quite what I grew up enjoying. But the choices are endless. So we offer a culinary section within our organization. We also recently started doing health coaching. I mean, hey, who doesn't need a coach to help them along? So we have health coaching as an organization. We also have, I think, 16 specific support groups. They were like the small groups when we were live. And that's, you know, for diabetes, for heart disease, for weight loss. I do one called Getting It Started just to get you kicked off and what to think about. Now, you know, we aren't doctor surrounded. We're community nutritional people surrounded. So you could be with like-minded people as often and as much as you want. Do you go by vegan or plant-based or you use Well, I, I don't do want to use vegan because vegan is oil, you know, and I'm, I'm a, I cannot have oil. I don't touch oil. So I, I'm going to respond to that. Let me respond to that. Please. Yeah. Vegan, I don't think vegan is oil. To Ve me it is. To me it isn't, and here's why. Okay. Well, you could say plant-based is oil too because it's just plant-based. It's yeah. not, if you say whole food, then it's... Well, I do say whole food plant-based. <laughs> okay. So, but, but yeah. now... The vegan should be whole food. It doesn't require packaging or processing, which is damaging to the environment. It's invasive to other species. And humans are animals too. So if it's harmful to the human, then it's not vegan. You know, here, I'll follow up with, I'll add to that. By the way, you know, the yeah. old uh, mother in a face thing, you know, yeah. like you can't touch it. But what I always found interesting for me, and I agree with what you said, you know, in the desire to make sure that we have enough food sources, We'll use an example of, oh, just use corn. Here in the Midwest, people grow a lot of corn. And there was a need to have, instead of four to six ears on a stalk, they wanted to have twice that much. So what would they do? They'd put stuff into the ground that were, you know, to, to amp it up, some steroids, something to make it grow more. Now, that stuff was great when you could make it, because the bottom line is that you made twice as much, but it wasn't good for humans. Mm -hmm. Now they take that feed, that corn, which is genetically improved, mm -hmm. they give it to the animals. Now they give it to the animals, so they're eating the stuff that's bioengineered. Bio they're giving the animals steroids because they want that yield to be not a, you know, X amount of weight pig or, or, or cattle. They want it twice the size or three times the size so they could get more to the store, so they're eating bad food, they're putting steroids, and then they put it all together, and who gets to eat it? Us. It doesn't, hit, it doesn't hurt us early, but over time, it destroys us. When I think of vegan, I think it's somebody who cares about animals, the planet, and the food side of the equation. Yeah, yeah. But I am whole food, plant-based, no oil. It's just that, like, what am I gonna say to people? Hi, my name's Paul, I'm whole food, plant-based, no oil. Like, really? Yeah, yeah. Like, I, I skin Well, you don't have down. to say no oil, because that's redundant. Yeah. Your reasons for doing this for health, have they changed at all over time? Well, you know, I, I've made it clear over all these years. I got my, my little puppy dog who's now 17. There's a joke, and I'll just say it because it always reminds me of it. If you really want to know who loves you, you put your wife and your dog in the trunk for three hours, open up the trunk, who's happy to see you? So to me, you know, like I'm in love with my wife, but the true love of my life might be my dog, Soph. And she's right there staring at both of us. So I love animals, but really it's the planet. Like that's the change. Because, I mean, no matter what you are, red, blue, far left, far right, whatever you are, we only got one planet. Yeah. That's it, we got one planet. And we are, just, we are hurting it. You know, like we are hurting it. Now I'm not a scientist, like I'm not a doctor. I can't be, give you all the specifics of the way we're hurting it. You know, maybe it's just the cycle that we're in. Again, you know, I'm not into that stuff. Other than when you take the Amazon rainforest and get rid of it because you need more lumber, when all of a sudden uh, 
there's issues with the ozone layer and as a result there's droughts everywhere and floods everywhere and and when you see these crazy you know so there's a lot going on is it cyclical i don't know i just know that we only have one planet if we did nothing we should protect this planet so, so you care about animals the planet and eating healthy that sounds uh a vegan <laughs> it's the oil thing that is the tripping point point. and i get it um when i was at the national health association conference a lot of the people were the same way you know they were like vegans and i don't really like associating with that because they know a lot of vegans they're not health oriented enough to be a good representative of something they want to be inclined toward they're dropping the ball a little bit you know by not being the healthiest representation of that it's it's tough to look at somebody who tells me they're healthy and they're morbidly obese you know like I, I did this segment called doctors teaching doctors and I'd have these doctors come up to me and say hey I eat healthy I'm in great shape I, I eat well and I'd look at them and I didn't know these guys and I'd look I'd touch your belly I go you're not telling me the truth because I mean I know what I used to look like you know and yeah. now while I'm you know I still got a little bit of yeah but you were eat. you were tough though and and yeah, you had but, heart disease right but I'm just saying it's like I, when someone tells me they're eating like perfectly healthy, I could tell. Mm -hmm. I, you could see it. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, anybody who's really whole food plant based is pretty thin. Yeah, and most vegans are. There's a few that are skinny fat or. You know, when you could eat Oreos and Impossible yeah, yeah. Burgers. And, but I don't know too many that do that. I mean, it's cliche to say what yeah. you're saying, you know. I, I don't know. I, yeah. I, I, you know what? I, I, honest to goodness, I, I sit there and just mentally move forward. Yeah, yeah. You know, I just sit there and say, well, today, we got to do this so we could help more people. Yeah, yeah. You know, because I'm not going to be able to change the way medical schools think. It's not going to happen. I'm not going to change the way what hospitals feed people, nor what doctors say to people. I, I wish I could. But what I can do is just make sure that if someone shows up or has a question, we just answer them. Now, is your wife vegan? She's gorgeous, beautiful, and my best friend I've ever had. No, she's not vegan. Like most family like I, out of all my family i've got one son who's now become vegan but for animal rights the most important thing is my family's become aware you know i i was never aware until it hit me they're aware because they see it through me and they've been to my you know some of our events but the most important person is my wife tracy and we are house divided not in only food everything else we're the same it's one of those things where her family uh the, the women in her family live to 100 with, with how they're eating. So I'm not going to judge her on that. That's just a respectful adult decision. We just, we don't, we don't get into each other's backyard with, with those type of you know, conversations. Do I wish everyone in my family was whole food plant-based? Yes, because I wouldn't have to cook as much. <laughs> you know? But I'm really lucky because they've accepted it. You know, they just, they've accepted it. I, I, I wish you guys would have known me before whole food plant-based. I was really a different person. Sometimes I hear people in my, like my comment section or, you know, the typical thing is, well, so-and-so lived to a hundred and they smoked and drank and they ate whatever. That's a one-off. Yeah. I mean, so, you know, genetics of course does help, but we don't, hey, really, I, I was, we don't know how long we're right. supposed to live. I, you know, what's funny about that. Like my attitude is I I'm 64. Yeah. Okay. How old are you? I'm I'll, 49. I'll be 50 right. now. I just want to live like where I feel like I'm giving back something to this world, but me privately, personally, I want to live without big time pain. Like, you know, you, when I talk to my buddies who are in their sixties, closer, you know, 64 to 70, mm -hmm. it's like, I can't be around them anymore because all they do, I'm on this pill, I'm on this pill, this hurts, that hurts, this hurts, you know, it's like, and then they look at me, well, what's going on with you? Nothing. <laughs> How can that be? Well, because I don't eat any inflammatory stuff. I, I you know, I, I keep the weight off. You guys are, your knee hurts, your hip hurts, your shoulder. How about dropping a couple LBs, you know? Like, you know, these guys I grew up and went to high school with so I could say anything. But my point here is, is that it's become tougher to listen to that stuff. So just me selfishly, I don't know how long I'm going to live. I just want to be able to live knowing that I, I'm, I'm not what I used to be, but I don't want to be in pain. Like, like I used to be able to, play tennis at a high level well now i play i'll play pickleball a few times i used to be able to play competitive really high level softball I, I gave that up but what am i replacing it with i'm replacing it with walking five six miles riding with my wife or walking with my, riding my bike 20 miles with my wife 
You know what I'm saying? And then I'm now golfing, and when I can, I walk. Okay? So these are the things that have replaced the more competitive things. I accept we get older, things change. I just want to slow the progression of the day-to-day -day pain. And I think that is what motivates me, personally. All right. Do you have any regrets? That's a heavy subject. Um, you know, the only, you know, I've got some personal regrets of maybe in a past life, I, there are a few people I probably could have treated better. I've lived a, a good life. You know, I've, I've lived a, a, a very good life. I wish my mom, my mom died when I was really young. So I guess the only regret I have is I wish she would have been around to see me over the last 10 years. She'd have been really proud. And she would have loved our three boys. So that's you know, just those type of regrets. I kind of wish if there was one other one, it was like, I really wish the plant-based community would love more each other, no matter what. I mean, my God, at the core, they all want people healthier. Nothing else should matter than people being healthier. So I wish that everyone could work together as one, together as one, because then that message would be even louder. Why didn't you go vegan sooner? Didn't really know about it. That wasn't part of my, you know, I wasn't aware of it. I may have heard of vegan. I may have heard of it. Or plant-based. But why would I, before the age of 53, when I started getting sick, prior to that, uh, I liked eating bad food. <laughs> you know what I mean? Why would I want to give that up? I didn't have a dog or an animal back then. You know, I had three animals, my sons. <laughs> they were awesome. So many good memories. But my point is, I just, you know, just, I didn't think about the planet. I didn't think about these things. But all of a sudden, that's all I think about. And I have thought about that for 10 years. Was there ever a time before all of this that you thought, there's no way I could do that? No, because I'm, I'm a little psycho, you know, like, like I could do anything. You know, I mean, I went, I, I, I switched on overnight, you know, eating meat, dairy, and oil. The next day, I, I haven't touched it since. Yeah. Now, to be fair, it hasn't been, I have not been like plant perfect every day for 10 years, okay? I've had, you know, 10 exceptions over the 10 years. You know, like once a year, I'll, I may say, well, I'll take a bite of this or a bite of that. But when I do, it gets me. So I get the four or five minutes of whatever enjoyment, piece of chocolate, bite of this or bite of that, whatever it is. But the next day, I'm doubled over. I'm just, I'm in so much misery, you know? Still might still do it because I'm a little, you know, but that's what happens. Life has been uh, a joy. I just wanted to continue being joyous. That's all. Prior to doing this, were you at least eating some of these foods to make it easy to, you know, because like sometimes people have transitional issues. Was it, was it hard transitioning? Well, I had no choice. I was real sick. But, yeah. but let me say this. I thought I was eating better, meaning that, you know, granted, I, I would have like iceberg lettuce. Because, you know, Paul, instead of eating bad food, just eat some lettuce. Well, it turns out iceberg's not so great. Or instead of having ranch dressing, I would have like oil and vinegar. Well, it's not as bad as ranch, right? So, or instead of having eggs, I have egg whites. Well, that didn't really last too long. And this is all before the bypass. Right. This is when my doctor said, hey, your cholesterol is 347. Mm -hmm. Now it's time to eat some dietary yeah. whatever was out there. there. And what was out there not only tastes terrible, but there wasn't much of it out there. So I was doing a little bit of retraction on what I was eating, but I thought as long as I had the cholesterol, I was under doctor's yearly care, and my cholesterol, as he said, 280 was baseline okay at that time for him, I thought I was okay. Yeah, but now, I mean, were you at least eating some beans and greens and grains and whatnot? Uh, well, I would have rice, but it wouldn't be whole wheat. Mm -hmm. Or whole, whole grain, you mean? A whole grain, whole wheat, whole grain. You know, I would have beans occasionally, but that was in a chili of some kind that was probably bad for me. So, yeah, I was making some small changes, but not enough. Yeah, yeah. I was just wondering, like, uh, so was it hard to transition? Like, like I know you had to, but some people, they just, you know, they, they hey, might have a little bit of bloating or, or whatever. I thought I was going to die. <laughs> when you were eating these new no, foods? No, I thought I was going to die, like, oh, like oh. When, I, when, I, when they said, you got to make a change. Yeah. Because... I, I, again, I remember my dad and his brothers, you know, like these were people I loved as a kid growing up and they died, two out of three died at the table, mm. you know, and I was too young. I was 10, 11, 12, 13 years old 
our family stopped being a family because of the uncles who I lost. So I didn't want to, you know, I wanted to honor their life because I had so many young kid memories that was fun. And uh, yeah, I mean, I, I just, it, it, it's not easy to make a change. It's, it's not easy. It's tough. Yeah. But that's 10 years ago. Today, it's a lot easier because you, you uh, here's an example. I loved brownies growing up, filled with chocolate and all that stuff. So now there's on, I go on plant-based whatever and find a brownie recipe. I found one. And now I can literally make brownies that are soft and, th you know, all, but they're not as sweet as I, so all the textures, there, everything's, so that's the plant-based world, which is I could get you tuna fish that tastes like ish, tuna-ish fish. Mm -hmm. it's, it's got all the consistency, everything, but it doesn't have the fish part. Mm -hmm. So it's like you could come close to get, enjoying everything you used to like, uh, a, a, a bean burger. You know, you put on ketchup and mustard and, 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 you know, and all of a sudden you can make it, it's pretty close, but that's what you get. You're almost there, but you're not there from the food you used to have. But, but so now, what? but now your tastes have acclimated to this to where I bet if you were to taste anything salty and oily, it would probably be too the much. few times you could, like, yeah, I pick it up really quick. Like, yeah. like if I take a bite of something and I'm like, you know, sometimes we go to the restaurant and they'll say, oh, we don't do these things. Then you take a bite of it. I'm like, oh. So it's not like you're missing anything. You've just acclimated. You you were just acclimated to these hyper palatable foods, and you're not missing those because now you're acclimated to these hey, less hyper I, palatable. Th 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 uh, that's your story. Is I'll, it or I, not? I don't know. No, I mean, I still after ten years, there's some things I still miss. So if you tried to eat something wouldn't like salty, wouldn't it be like too much? Well, like whereas before it wasn't. Like when, when I used to have these Super Bowl parties. Mm -hmm. And we'd bring in all the pizza that you could imagine, all flavored, whatever you wanted, you know, with, with salad, right? So it's tough. I, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm seeing all my friends gorge on some great pizza that we have here in Michigan. Mm -hmm. And I'm sitting there going, you know, like, like a kid, you know, <laughs> like, can't have any, you know, because they can't, they won't make, you know. So I'm just saying that, you know, I still have those memories or, yeah. or just something like, a, you know, when everyone goes to the ice cream place. Mm -hmm. Well, I could have a no banana or whatever or whatever they call, you know. But it's not the same as a as a as a chocolate float with all the you know these are memories, yeah. you know. But these are memories of me as a kid. I'm an adult. I know what I can do and what I can't. And if I do it, I know what's gonna I'm gonna how I'm gonna feel. Again, these are just choices. And to me, it's always about choices. And like I said, if we educate the world about the benefits of nutrition before pills or procedures, that's all we ask for. The rest is on people making good choices for whatever the reason animals planet health but if they don't know about it you know we don't know what we don't know if they don't know about it how can they make a good choice an informed choice yeah and if they grew up in a culture where it becomes second nature to be desensitized to eating this way right are they really even making a choice hey i heard i i heard something the other day it was like and and, and really it, I, it was a speech by thomas campbell it was a wonderful speech and he says it's funny you look at TV today, which everyone watches TV, you know, like I try not to watch much, but if I do, it's one commercial is like fast food, bad food. The next commercial is a general commercial. And the third one is medicine to help you offset the bad food you eat. Yeah, yeah. Like that's crazy. Yeah. So that's where we're at. So what kind of foods do you typically eat on a, on a given day right now? You know, if you want, I could take you into my kitchen. I could show you. Sophie's 17 years old. She's a good girl. Hey, are you a good girl? Is that true? She used to do a lot of tricks, and now she just hangs out. Just hangs out. No more jumping. No more ball retrieving. Now, Sophie, are you gonna make her plant based? Uh, you know, she does love broccoli, and she likes you know carrots, and she does like um, uh, apples. So it is part of her daily regimen. What's part of your regimen? So I redesigned the cupboards a little bit, thanks to my wife, but let's take a look. Up here are my spices, and you can see every little spices for everything. So I'm full of spices because I realized by using spices you can improve the taste of your food. Pretty much here's my beans and nuts, balsamics, my hotter food, the garlic sauce, the sweet and sour sauce. Down here is a combination of mine and Sophie's, her food, my food, the whole wheat noodles. This is my plant-based 
place for food. And then if you go in my refrigerator, don't get too excited. Uh, now remember, we're house divided, so you do, we'll see eggs. That's my wife's piece. But if you look in here, here's my kale, fresh kale. Here's broccoli and cauliflower. Here's my fruits. I made this yesterday, my first attempt. And this is pot stickers. So I never made them before, and I made them yesterday for like a whole wheat little thin wrap. And then I made a combination of tofu with ginger, garlic, fresh onions, and kind of, you know, uh, forked it till it was kind of smooth. That was the piece I put inside the pot sticker. And um, I'll let you know how they taste tomorrow. I mean, this is pretty much it. I've got my Ezekiel breads here, my corn, my vegetables, but really I'm a raw person, a fresh person, and I'm a very boring eater. I drink two or three bottles of water in the morning. And my first meal is traditionally broccoli cauliflower medley, a big salad. And I'll show you my salad bowl. This is where I use for my infused water. This is the most valuable kitchen piece I have. This is my salad bowl. I have a salad every day. It includes kale, arugula, Swiss chard, heavy on the kale side. Then I throw in uh, cabbages uh, along with onion, uh, red onion for me, and uh, some sesame seeds with my favorite balsamic and pepper. And I kind of graze on it all day with a whole wheat piece of bread. And if I don't feel like having the broccoli medley with the cauliflower or the salad today, Jeff and I had uh, a really nice, right, Jeff? He, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, a oatmeal with a whole bunch of fruit with some flax meal along with uh, some cinnamon. So that's what we had. That's my breakfast and lunch every day of my life. And then I get to sparse, you know, spike it up a little bit in dinner where I'll make the bean burgers. In fact, I made some the other day. I could actually, I show you, they actually came out pretty good. You know, they're, they're solid, they're good. You put a couple of them together with some whole wheat bread, uh, some mustard and uh, ketchup, and boom, it, you've got yourself a, a darn good meal. So that's my eating. I go to a couple restaurants. I was fortunate to, that there were two or three restaurants here in the Michigan area that uh, are willing to make me batch cook. By the way, batch cook every time I can. So if I, who, I don't like cooking, but when I do cook, it's batch cooking. The bean burgers I showed you, I made enough for like three months. You know, I made a lot. So it was a half day of cooking on a rainy day, but food I could pull from for three months. But I also go to a handful of restaurants, and when I go there, I don't get a, a, a meal for one. I get a meal for 10, because I could freeze it. So there's my favorite restaurant. I don't mind saying it. It's Indo Restaurant in Kego Harbor, Michigan. Malika and Nick have been wonderful, and she's an Indonesia head chef who has created some wonderful dishes for me. Another thing I started doing recently is my friend Meg at Mama Says, I'm not getting paid by Mama Says, I'm just telling the truth. They actually make a cookie that I fell in love with that could be shipped to me with it has no oil. Also, they make a couple different new items, like a tuna-ish fish that, you know, just tastes pretty darn good. So anytime I find something that I, I like, I then try to either mimic it or just buy it as, along the way. You got a favorite quote you want to share? Yes, I do. Um, I, I have two of them. One, nutrition before pills or procedures. So always consider nutrition before the doctor puts you on pills and then later on a procedure. So nutrition before pills or procedures. The other one is more of a community thing, which is together as one. You know, these are crazy times right now. So just let's try and be more together than, than opposed. You know, love is, is still the most powerful thing that you could share with another person or animal. You think we'll ever see a vegan world? What scares me is that I always think that it has to come down to like a really bad time or place. Like I've asked the question of, do we have to have like a flood or lose a city because of flooding before people are gonna make massive changes? Will the world come to veganism? You know, I, I don't, I mean, yeah, I think eventually it might, but what's going to have to happen for that to happen? And that's what concerns me the most. Uh, but we're brilliant humans. You know, so many, we were able to do so many amazing things just in my lifetime. So I think that more amazing things will happen and maybe we could figure a way for a better planet. 
But in the meantime, uh, you know, just uh, please eat responsibly. Do you think you'll ever eat lab-grown meat? Me personally? Yeah. No. What if a doctor said you had to eat animals? What would you say? No. No, I mean, you know, I ate animals for 53 years. And that's, that's the chapter of the 53 years. The next one is no animals, no fish, no chicken, no dairy, no oil for the rest of my life. And there's nothing that's going to change me unless my, no, there's nothing. There's nothing that could change my mind. And uh, what's next on your, in your chapter here, next Ooh. chapter? Well, I'm a granddad, so loving the grandkids, that's very important. I'm looking at a big, big, big announcement next year where a few people that are like-minded as I am may be joining forces. I'm not going to say any more because I'm just teasing you. And I'm sorry, I don't want to be a tease, but this could change the landscape of plant-based in the near future because these announcements are with no small-time players. I believe in Together as One. If I don't have certain things and they don't have certain things, why don't we work together? I don't have the ego. I, I don't care. Call, call us whatever you want. I just want the world to know the benefits of nutrition before pills and procedures. So get ready, follow PBNSG, and wait for the announcement. It should happen, I hope, January, February. And it's going to make us bigger, stronger, but we're already pretty smart. We know about the benefits of nutrition.